Hello, Captains. This is the Doctor. We've got a lot to talk about in Star Trek Online today. This is just a bit of a news update to let you know what is coming in terms of Star Trek Online because it is time for the sixth anniversary of Star Trek Online. That means there's going to be new content, as in a new mission to play. There's going to be a new ship to grind for. There is going to be a new lockbox. There are going to be some new low buy ships, uh, all kinds of good stuff that you will want to be aware of uh, to grind for here in the um, little while, actually coming out tomorrow, the 28th. I don't know when this video will go up, probably not even till tomorrow. So this will probably be today when this video goes up and the anniversary starts. Um, but let's start, I've got a million tabs open here to go through. Uh, let's start by actually talking about the announcement of the anniversary event so here it is right here uh, we'll zoom in so you can read this along with me um, this says we're proud to announce star trek online will be celebrating our sixth anniversary with a brand new anniversary event we will plan on partying in style and have tons of exciting new content in store for you beginning january 28th through February 24th, so that's almost an entire month, guys, that we're going to have of this, so that's good, of 2016. Captains will be able to enjoy our new featured episode, Time and Tide. We will travel to the 28th century to witness the signing of the Temporal Accords and discover the presence of a dangerous new enemy. Team up with Captain Ben Walker of the USS Bastok to face the challenge from the new frontier time itself. Check back tomorrow or more. Okay, so this is starting literally, I guess, when this video goes up today. Uh, but this will be just so you know what's coming down. I'm doing this video so that way you'll know what to actually do when you jump into the game for this anniversary event. Captains will also see the return of a fan favorite. We're bring, bringing back the Omega Particle minigame where Q tasks you with stabilizing Omega Particles across the galaxy. So the minigame is coming back. I don't know what the reward is for the Omega Particle minigame, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, with the anniversary event, you'll be able to enjoy brand new rewards. Captains will earn tons of awesome items such as upgrade kits, episode rewards, and even an all-new Tier 6 Crinum Science Vessel. That's right, we're getting a Tier 6 Crinum Science Vessel as the um, ship to grind for this anniversary. You're not going to get it free. Uh, it's not a mission reward. Playing the main mission or the new mission coming out for this event will not get you the ship, but it will get you the money or the currency that they're using toward the, the ship you're going to have to do a lot more grinding to actually get it in the past a long time ago they they had some free ships they gave out the um the uh, uh the odyssey was a free ship i believe there was the ambassador class uh those were given out as free ships a long time ago all you had to do is play the mission but now they've made them grindy for the last few years you have to actually grind for the ships um, looking to, uh, we'll read about that ship by the way here in a second. Looking to celebrate the anniversary event early, so are we from January 26th to February 1st. We're hosting new giveaways each day. I've been, I have actually been doing these, so I've been jumping into the game every day to grab the freebies they've been giving away. Uh, I have also, I've been doing it on, um, Rami Summers and all my main characters, so even my free to play character will have some of these goodies. Um, so that's basically the introduction there to the anniversary event, the sixth year anniversary event. Um, can't believe it, but I have been here all six years. In fact, I was here before the game even launched gold status. I was here during the beta part of this game. So I have been here longer than six years. I can't believe it, but I'm still here, still here in this game. Uh, probably th this is probably the longest game or longest MMO for sure I've ever been a part of. Uh, now I'm sure there are other MMOs people have been a part of for a very long time, but this is one that I personally have been a part of for six years, and it's the only one that I really have been a part of for this long. Uh, and anyway, still going on. Um, you know, all the doom and gloom in the past when people thought, oh, it wouldn't last. Uh, when the whole selling of Atari thing went down and people were like, oh, the game's going to get shut down or it won't last long. Then PWE bought it. Then there was that little rumor about P PWE having trouble, maybe going to cancel the game, all this stuff. And here it is still. I mean, this you got to give it to this game, guys. 
it has had some standing legs. It has survived uh, a lot of stuff, and it's still alive. So that is really cool. Um, okay, that's the announcement. Uh, obviously, the big thing here is that there's going to be a new ship to grind for, and somewhere I have the tab open for it. Let me go through all my tabs here. Here it is, Anniversary Crinum ship. So here's a picture of it. This is a Crinum science vessel. It's tier six. I'm quite looking forward to this. Maybe it will be enough to replace as my favorite, which is the Wells. I have always enjoyed the Wells class, and I have been looking for a T6 equivalent of that uh, because the Wells is a T5 ship. Uh, even if it's upgraded to T5U, it is not a T6 ship, and I really want a T6 Wells, uh, but that's not what we're getting. So, it says here, during, the, during Star Trek Online 6th Anniversary event, you will be able to obtain 6th Anniversary prize vouchers by participating in the event. The 6th Anniversary prize vouchers can be spent on the event reputation project to obtain the Crinum Science Vessel. This project requires 1,000 6th Anniversary prize vouchers. Once the starship is obtained by any character on your account, the characters on this account can claim the Crindom Science Vessel from the account claim tab without the event store or within the event store in the event reputation window. So that I believe will help get it on all my other characters as well. But I will definitely be grinding this out on my main character who is a science character and I will be getting this ship and I will do a review of it. So that's gonna happen. All right, so here's the item and cap items and capabilities or abilities of the ship. The Crinum Science Vessel comes equipped with the Timeline Stabilizer Universal Console. Activating the console will stabilize any temporal anomalies around your starship. This has the side effect of briefly increasing the flow of time within and around your starship. Enemies affected by this console will suffer a pen penalty to their recharge times, flight speed, and turn rate. Your starship will receive a boost to both recharge times and weapon activation times per affected foe. This console also provides a passive reduction to all science bridge officer abilities. This console may be equipped on any starship. Now, I like, this is interesting about the uh, reduced time to science bridge officer abilities because there's another console that reduces the recharge time of all bridge officer abilities, uh, and that is the Delta Reputation console. It's the Bioneural Gel Pack one, and it will reduce the recharge time on bridge officer abilities. So you, if you combine that console with this one, which works with science bridge officer abilities, that means your science officer abilities will be even more faster at recharging. So you could combine the two and get really fast science bridge officer ability um, reduction. That's pretty interesting and something to think about. And in fact, on my build, I will be using the gel pack because it's part of my normal science build anyway. So I will be able to put those two together and we'll see what the improved reduction time on that science officer ability, excuse me, abilities really are. The Starship Trait. Okay, after achieving level 5 in the Crinum Science Vessel Starship Mastery, you will unlock the improved Feedback Pulse Starship Trait. While this trait is slotted, Feedback Pulse will deal additional damage. Each time you are hit while Feedback Pulse is active, you will gain a buff that boosts your critical hit chance and critical severity. This buff stacks up to 10 times. So this is interesting. They're trying to make use out of Feedback Pulse, which really, I don't think anybody ever uses. Uh, I did when it when I first, you know, started leveling a character, I thought, oh, this sounds cool. It could increase my damage output. Really, it doesn't do a big job. It doesn't do a whole lot. So I don't think a lot of people use our feedback pulse just because it's kind of useless. So I think what they're trying to do here is make this ability a little more useful so people will use it. Um, I don't know that I will 100%, but if I, I guess if I want to benefit from this trait, I will have to. So I guess I will have to get one of my characters trained up in feedback pulse so that they can try this trade out. That's the only way. Interesting th ship though. Um, basically, I'm looking forward to this ship. Sounds like it'll be a pretty good ship. Uh, I, I don't know about the looks of it. I'm not very, I'm not very keen on the Crinum's texturing. Uh, all the Crinum ships, in fact, they have that brown color texturing there. Um, I don't really like their their design either, uh, the crinum design. It, it's just not my my kind of style that I really like, uh, but I mean, I'll give it a shot. I'm gonna fly this ship, I'm gonna review it. But just right off the bat, 
It's not something that immediately appeals to me in terms of design or texturing. But that's just my opinion. They also released the stats on the ship. So we can see what the stats are on the science vessel. Tier 6, um, hull strength, 31.5 at level 40, 36.2 at level 50, and 42,000 at level 60. A shield modifier of 1.475. A lot of people are talking about this because this is, I think so far right now, the highest shield modifier ever seen on a ship in Star Trek Online. Before this number, I think it used to be 1.45 was the highest shield modifier you could find. And now this is 1.475. So this ship will have the absolute highest shield capacity on any ship that you could possibly have. So if you matted this ship with a shield that has the highest shield capacity in the game, being a covariant shield, uh, and I'm not sure which one actually is the highest, but I know Delta Alliance shield has a pretty high shield capacity and maybe an maybe any maybe an advanced or elite fleet shield might have might also have that. I'm not sure exactly which one, but if you could put the absolute highest shield capacity shield on this ship combined with that shield modifier and then on top of that use a trait, a, a starship trait to not a starship trait, but a, um, a space trait, one of your space traits uh, from the reputation. And I also think from personal traits to raise your shield capacity. There's ones that do like 10% higher shield capacity. If you put all that together, plus, plus maximum shield capacity consoles in your science slots or whatever, my goodness, I, I could see 30K plus shields, 30K. Could you imagine that? Wow. Very powerful, very powerful on that front, um, on the shield front. A crew of 720, so it's not too big, not too small. A four, uh, four weapons of three, aft three, typical science layout there, nothing, nothing real special. I wish it would have a four, I wish it would have four forward weapon slots, but it's only got three. Um, device slots three. Bridge officer stations is one lieutenant commander tactical or intel seating, so you can have an intel bridge officer here, one lieutenant engineering, one lieutenant science, one commander science, one lieutenant universal. So definitely a com this is built for a science captain, commander science powers, tier three science powers, that sort of thing. Console modification is three tactical, three engineering, but five science tactile, uh, sci five science consoles. So this is definitely a science ship, no doubt about that. 10 degrees a second. Sounds kind of slow to me, but I guess we'll see. Uh, impulse modifiers 0.15, inertia 45, plus 15 to auxiliary. Now, normally you see like plus 10 to auxiliary, so that is pretty cool. It's got a higher auxiliary, plus 5 to engine. It's got sensor analysis, subsystem targeting, secondary deflector. That's good because it's a science ship. The timeline stabilizer, and then a science vessel uh, package. Enhanced particle generators, advanced shield systems, enhanced restorative circuitry, reactive shield technology, and then the improved feedback pulse starship trait. So we already read about the timeline stabilizer and we read about the starship trait. Um, I cannot wait to get this ship. I am going to get it on my science character and I'm going to review it. I'm very excited about this ship. Um, there is a mirror lockbox coming. That's right, a mirror lockbox. And there was something else before that. Mirror incursion lockbox, here we go. The announcement about it. So this relates to the mirror universe stuff released in New Dawn, season 11. And obviously they're gonna have mirror universe lockbox, basically. The Tholians and the Mirror Universe have long been inextricably tied together, and the phenomena of interphase and dimensional travel being hallmarks of Tholian space and influence. The ambitious incursions of Terran Empire forces have brought allied forces into contact with the technology from the other side of the looking glass, including some of the advanced technology that the Mirror Universe has acquired from its own future counterparts. Simultaneously, the Tholians have been present at nearly every incident of temporal shifting or dimensional instability, 
with rifts to the mirror universe never far behind. Examples of both forms of enemy technology have already come under research with an eye to learning how to use Tholian ships to safely traverse interfaces and how to learn from the advances in mirror universe technologies. Many of these advances are already coming into field testing in hopes of providing parity against enemy forces. By opening one of the new mirror incursion lockboxes, players will have a chance to win the Tholian Tarantula Dreadnought Cruiser Tier 6. This enormous ship is the linchpin of the Tholian fleet, built by the reclusive crystalline entity, uh, entities to stand up to anything that the galaxy might throw at them. The Tholian Tarantula Dreadnought Cruiser Tier 6 comes with a web cannon console, which snares enemies caught in the front of the ship when it fires its devastating blast. The tractor repulsor webs then constricts the ships in a damaging grip. Completing the Starship Mastery of the Tholian Tarantula Dreadnought Cruiser unlocks the following trait, Energy Web. While this trait is slotted, activation of beam overload, surgical strikes, or cannon rapid fire, your next attack will cause your foe to be trapped in an energy web. Enemies trapped in the energy web will suffer heavily, heavy shield penetrating physical damage over time and be held briefly. This ability's damage is improved by auxiliary power and starship particle generators. Energy web can be triggered once every 45 seconds. So there's the big thing that you're going to get out of this box is the tarantula. Now, obviously, this is going to be a low chance of getting it. It's the gamble of opening lock boxes. Uh, so, you know, there you go. But, of course, people will win it. People will put it on the exchange, and it'll probably be a billion energy credits. But there you go. <laughs> Um, the Mirror Universe Lockbox also includes a chance to win the Tholian Mesh Weaver Escort. This nimble Tier 5 ship is designed to, to harry enemies while keeping them hammed, hemmed in with web walls. The low buy store, um, so that's cool, that, that, so you can also get these Mesh Weaver Escorts. Those aren't too great, they're, still, they're Tier 5. Maybe they'd be upgradable to Tier 5 U, I'm not sure. I would like to have one to try out, but it looks like uh, not the best of a ship. Uh, but I, this is what I'm really interested in. The low buy store will now offer the Paradox Temporal Dreadnought Tier 6. This mirror universe ship is one of the most powerful ships in the Terran Empire's fleet, using advanced technology from the future to be both durable and nimble. This ship includes a Lieutenant Tactical slash Command Seat and a Lieutenant Commander Universal slash Intel Seat for extraordinary flexibility. That's right, guys. You will have the option of using Intel abilities and command abilities on the same ship. So that is really unique. I think there might be only one other ship that has those kind of capabilities in the game. So that's going to be a very versatile ship. The Paradox Temporal Dreadnought Tier 6 includes a Temporal Rift Stabilizer, a console that generates temporal anomalies along the forward line of the ship. These anomalies slow enemies and cause kinetic damage as they warp and destabilize the timeline. Very interesting, however, that the Crenum Science Vessel Tier 6 has an ability that basically removes these temporal rifts from the ship. So it's like they built one ship to create temporal rifts, and then they built another ship to give us that can take these anomalies away. I don't know how useful that ability is, is going to be with other ships, though, that don't produce temporal rifts in the first place. But there you go. Additionally, flying the Paradox Temporal Dreadnought enables unlocking of the following trait, Unstable Anomalies. While this trait is slotted, your Gravity Well and Tykan's Rift Anomalies will cause heavy kinetic damage in a 5 kilometer area of effect when they expire. This damage is improved by Starship Particle Generators. Wow. In keeping with the captured Tholian and Mirror Universe technologies included in the lockbox, the Mirror Incursion lockbox includes the chance to acquire a Web Snare console which fires a compressed beam of tractor repulsors that forms a massive web. Unlike a typical Tholian web wall, however, this web captures ships that fly near it and then entangles and crushes them while making them stick to the wall. Oh my gosh, that sounds incredible. I want to see that. I want to try that. A new set of genetic sequ sequencers, trait unlocks can be obtained. There will be four trait packs. You've got Agony Modulator on ground, when you use a control kit power, a power that causes a confused disable hold, the power also causes a damage over time effect. There is blissful agony on ground. When you suffer a control effect, you gain a resist against such effects and damage resistance and small heal over time. 
and then you've got invasive control programming space. When you activate a control effect on a foe, add a random subsystem offline effect, and then secret command code space. When you suffer a control effect or subsystem offline, temporary gain plus damage resistance resist against control effects and a small heal over time. Alliance engineers have also salvaged some examples of advanced Terran technology in the form of Terran Empire kits. These Terran Empire kit packs grant you a kit appropriate to your career and level, in addition to offering standard skill bonuses. Each kit frame also enhances the duration of your control type powers. Terran weapons have fallen into the hands of allied forces, and some of them have made their way to the front lines. These brutal phasers include Terran Empire Agonizer technology, which has made their use controversial, but the chaos of the recent wars has made regulation difficult. Players can acquire Terran Empire Agony Phaser weapon packs. Opening a pack allows a choice of beam cannon or ground weapon. Beam weapon packs, either a beam array or a dual beam bank with a small chance of 360 degree beam array. Cannon packs include a turret, single cannon, dual cannon, or dual heavy cannon. Um, ground weapons grant a Terran Agony Phaser, Stun Pistol, Multi Beam Rifle, and have a distinctive Terran Empire look. Agony Phasers used as ship weapons have a chance to briefly disable an enemy ship as well as causing a small amount of damage over time. Agony Phaser ground weapons have a chance to hold an enemy and likewise cause additional damage over time. Captains can purchase Mirror Universe uniforms, including variants of the Odyssey, Bordescue, and Romulan uniforms as worn by their Mirror counterparts, available only to characters of the appropriate faction. Additionally, a special set of Jupiter Terran Empire uniforms adds more variants, including Admiral Leda's Mirror Uniform, piece, uniform pieces. The Mirror Incursion lockbox also includes a new set of Mirror Incursion Intel assignments. Each of these 10 assignments offers strong rewards and also holds a piece of research about the events of the Mirror Universe Incursion. Completing all 10 allows a player to claim the title Mirror Incursion Agent along with a box of 10,000 dilithium ore. Scoring a critical take, the intelligence community term for acquiring a rich load of secret information on all 10 allows the player to claim the title Mirror Incursion Infiltrator along with a box of 10,000 dilithium. The low buy store now includes several pieces of additional gear, including Terran Empire Sonic Phasers. The Terran Empire uses these specifically tuned ground weapons for fighting Tholians. Sonic Phasers have the Agony Phaser effects and also inflict 20% more damage when they're used against the Tholians. And they also have unique coloration to reflect their Terran origins. Captains can also acquire Tholian Toy Vanity Pets, which are tiny machines designed to resemble Tholian EV suits. Tholian Toy Packs can grant a blue, green, purple, or gold Tholian toy. And there are other things as well, such as fleet credits, uh, CXP, fleet marks, reputation marks, dilithium mining claims, experience, um, catalysts, and salvage technology. So a whole lot of stuff in the box, of course. You know how, how it is getting that kind of stuff. All very chancy there. But the big thing's going to be the tarantula. And then, of course, in the low buy store, the big thing is going to be the uh, Dreadnought uh, and then other other weaponry and stuff like that if you want. Or uniform. Uniforms will probably be a big thing. A lot of people like the uh, Mirror Universe uniforms. I like them, too. I like these updated uni uh, Mirror Universe uniforms. Uh, so that is something to look forward to. Here are the stats on the ship. We won't go over all the text here. Let's just go over the stats. Here's the Tarantula stats. Um, so the max hull strength on this is 57,200 at level 60. That's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty high. Shield modifiers 1.125, 2,000 crew on the Tarantula. Wow. 444 four aft, one Lieutenant Commander Tactical Command, one command, Commander Engineering, one Lieutenant Commander Science, one Instant Universal, one Lieutenant Universal or Intel. So the Tarantula also has a, either a command or Intel power or both can have command and intel powers on the tarantula as well so that so it's not just the dreadnought that's going to have that ability the tarantula is also going to four tactical four engineering three science so interesting that tactical and engineering slots are pretty equal on this seven and a half degree per second turn rate plus five to all power it can load dual cannons one hangar bay so note the tarantula does have a hangar bay um tholian widow fighters is what it uses it has the Tholian web cannon, and because it's a cruiser, it's going to have the cruiser communication arrays to track fire weapon system efficiency. 
Then it's got rapid repairs, enhanced plating, devastating hull, armored hull, and the energy web starship trait. So there's that. The set bonuses, it looks like there's a there's some Tholian technology sets here. The three-piece set includes the consoles from the Tholian Orb Weaver Science Vessel, Tholian Recluse Carrier, and Tholian Tarantula. Uh, so if you put the Tholian Web Generator, the Tholian Tetrion Grid, and the Tholian Web Cannon together, you get a two-piece bonus from this, or three-piece bonus. Two pieces give you a bonus called a Passive Exotic Damage and Turn Rate Improvement. And the third piece gives you a 3 kilometers PBAOE 15 second duration foe energy damage each second, minor shield drain each second. So a toggled Tholian radiation field ability for the third piece there. Interesting. All right. Um, let's go to the Paradox class, Temporal Dreadnought. This is a low buy ship. Um, this one is only 50,000 at level 60, so it's not as high as a hull of the Tarantula. That's kind of a shame, being that it's a 29th or 8th or whatever century starship it is. Uh, looks just like a 29th century Mobius, like a Mobius, like a dreadnoughted Mobius is what it looks like. But we don't know specifically what year it's from because they don't tell us here what year it's from. It could be from the 28th century since this mission deals with the 28th century we don't know um, but still being of the future you would think the whole strength would be a whole lot higher and it's not shield modifiers 1.425 that's still pretty high that no no that's more than pretty high that's real high that's up there with the highest of the shield modifiers on any ship so this is another ship that's going to have a really high shield modifier just like the crinum temporal ship wow Crew of 2,300. This is even more people than that ship. Or is it? Or is it? I forgot what it was now. But 2,300 is a lot of people. Four, four, and three aft weapons. So there you go. There's your there's your science ship with four, four weapon slots, I guess. Because it is a command. Yeah, this is a science ship because it's got a commander science. And then it has five science consoles. So here we go. This is just what I, I wanted, actually. I was just saying on the Crenum ship... I would have liked to have four forward weapon slots and three aft, and here here I have it now, four four and three aft weapons. So here is my tier six science ship that I want. It's this one right here. Four four three aft, one lieutenant tactical command, one lieutenant commander engineering, one instant science, one commander science, so you get your tier three science, one lieutenant commander, so I got intel powers and command powers on one ship. Three tactical uh, three engineering and five science, eight degrees a second, 0.15 inertia 40, plus 10 the shield power and ox power. Uh, so not as high ox as the Crenum ship. One hangar bay. So this is going to be a, ha a hangar bay ship here. Uh, it's loaded with the Eon or Aeon time ship fighters. Um, universal temporal rift stabilizer, sensor analysis, secondary deflectors, subsystem targeting. It, this is a science ship. That's what it is. Enhanced particle generators, advanced shield system, enhanced restorative circuitry, reactive shield, and unstable anomalies. This is my science ship, guys. So yeah, I'm going to get the Crenum one for sure. I'm definitely also getting this low buy one. I don't have the low buy, but I'll get it somehow. But I definitely want this ship. I think this could replace my Wells as my most favorite science ship. Because that's what I have been wanting as a tier 6 Wells. That's what this sounds like. This is my new tier six wells. That's not really a wells now. It's called a paradox class. I do wonder what year it's from though. The wells is from the 29th century. And I believe the Mobius is also from the 29th century. Now the Mobius is more geared toward an escort or a tactical player, but this one is definitely a science ship. So this looks like this will replace my wells, maybe as my most favorite science ship. Maybe better than the Crenum ship in fact, because it has four forward weapons instead of three. I like it. I want it. Um, and also, it looks like... Oh, okay, sweet. This is this is definitely awesome. This uses the temporal fragmentation system, just as my Wells class does. Okay, this three-piece set includes the console from the Wells Temporal Science Vessel, the Korath Temporal Science Vessel, or the Ar Armor Temporal Science Vessel, or the Mobius, uh, or the Crinum, or the Talvath and a paradox. So if you put the Tipler cylinder together with the Mannheim device together with the temporal rift stabilizer, you get three piece bonus. Now I've already got a Tipler cylinder 
and I have a Mannheim device because I've got both of those on my wells. So now with this ship, I'll have the temporal rift stabilizer. I can combine all three and get a three piece bonus out of this ship. So the two piece bonus causes the Tipler rewind time ability to hold nearby enemies. That hasn't changed. That's the same with the wells. But the new part here is the temporal acceleration. You get a minor reduction to science bridge officer ability recharge times and a significant reduction to temporal console ability recharge, recharge time. So it sounds like more bridge officer recharge time reductions. So you can use more of your bridge officer, uh, bridge officer abilities faster. That's what, that's what they're all about here. So, I, so you could put on, check this out, there's three, way, there's three ways you could increase your bridge officer recharge times here. First, you can have this ship and put on all those three pieces and get it here. Then you can add the bioneural gel pack and get a reduction to all bridge officer abilities with that. Then you can take the console from the Crinum time ship, the Crinum tier six ship that we're about to get on the anniversary, which reduces abilities on science abilities and add that to this ship. Your science abilities at that point should have like no recharge time on them. Can you imagine? I mean, my gosh, there's three ways to increase the uh, improve the recharge time on your bridge officer abilities. That's incredible, folks. Absolutely incredible. I want to try that big time. Okay, and it has a hangar bay, so it's going to have these Aeon time ships. These fighters are unlocked in their stores listed below. Um, they are EC store. Um, they have one anti proton beam array and one chroniton torpedo. So that's cool. I use anti protons anyway on that ship build, so it, it matches. It works well. Note Klingons and Klingon aligned Romulans can purchase Rojinko time ship fighters, and Rojinko time ship fighters have the same loadouts as Aeon time ship fighters. Um, Okay, then you can get advanced Aeon time ships. They have one anti-proton beam array, one chroniton, and one anti-proton beam array aft. Or you can get elite ones, which have one anti-proton beam array, one chroniton, one anti-proton aft, and then subatomic disruptor does disruptor damage that increases over time in torpedo high yield two. And these have the subatomic disruptor. Okay, cool. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Tholian Mesh Weaver, Tier 5 Escort Class. Um, I'm not too interested in the ship, but I do want to try it anyway. It's a Tier 5 ship anyway. 27,000 hull. It doesn't look that great. I would try it. I mean, it looks like a fun ship to fly, but it's a Tier 5 ship. And it looks like it can be upgraded to Tier 5U, so I would probably do that. Okay, wow. I tell you what, man. This Dreadnought, this is right up my alley. I want it bad. I got a burning for it. All right, it's gonna be good. Good. Let me go make sure we got it. We got that. We got that. We got that. We got that. Fiction preemptive planning. Uh, there was just something I wanted to mention. Uh, Cryptic releases these stories on their web page, kind of leading up to this whole event. And I've been reading these. These are really cool. Preemptive planning. Uh, these are just stories. I'm not going to read these here, but I just wanted to point these out that you can read these stories that kind of give background information on what's going on, help leading up to the new mission that we're going to play. So here's the Omega Particle game. I'm not going to read how to do it because you should know. If you don't know, you'll find out. Um, I just want to see what the reward is. Completing the minigame will score you a single Omega Trace at the very least. The better you score, the greater your chance of winning Omega Silver Shards or even Fragments. Uh, hmm. Uh, I guess you use them in the R&D system stuff to craft upgrade kits. So is that what it's for, the R&D stuff? That's probably why I'm not too interested in it myself because I don't really do that. That's probably what it is. Went over that, went over that. Gentle Repose, another one of those stories that they've put out, I recommend reading them. The, the whole thing with these stories is what's really cool here is it's talking a lot about um, the Nakul and um, what they've been doing in the past. They've been seeding temporal agents in past events 
but for some reason they're not lining up to where they think that they should be and that's because they realize they don't know our history as well as we know our history or something but they're trying to learn it and then put operatives in the right places in history to affect the federation so that is they showed up in an ep, in a a couple of episodes of enterprise they were the ones when uh, archer was flung back into um world war ii and um he met the evil space vampire nazis literally that's what they were that was the nakul so they've been placing time agents all through time and anyway the Pastok here in the 29th century has been tracking them and um, trying to, you know, see what's going on. But um, that's basically the story. It's kind of cool. And I think we'll be dealing with the Pastok in the next mission that we're going to play. Which, in fact, is called Time and Tide. That's the name of the episode. And here's the captain. Captain's Log, USS Bostock. One of the great honors of being a Starfleet captain is making first contact with a new civilization. As a temporal agent, one of the greatest honors can be making first contact with a civilization taking their fle uh, fledgling, step fledgling steps into time travel. Uh, that's basically us. We are, uh, we are at the brink of a regular time travel in Star Trek Online. The 25th century is when the Federation starts getting involved and I guess by the 26th century we're making regular time travel trips. Protecting the integrity of the timeline is a careful balancing act for us. We must provide our forebears enough information to protect against incursions from the future while not disrupting their natural development. The technique that has worked the best for us thus far is, make, is to make only a few individuals aware of future events. Individuals who understand the gravity of temporal issues. To that end, I have the honor today of bringing one of the greatest captains in history to witness the signing of the Temporal Accords, the historic event that stabilized the timeline. We felt that this would be the best way to make an official first contact, not only with a time-traveling civilization, but with a potential temporal agent. That's us, by the way, we're talking about. The captain comes from a key period in history, the early 25th century. That's when the Federation and its allies embarked on a new era of exploration and a new frontier, time itself. Charting the frontier brought a whole new set of dangers to light. Dangers I hope to help these explorers face and overcome. So, on Thursday, January 28th, celebrate the 6th anniversary of Star Trek Online by enjoying our latest featured episode, Time and Tide, where captains will travel through time to witness the historical signing of the Temporal Accords. Time and Tide continues our new season and our new story and includes great rewards that can earn over the course of several weeks. In addition to the reward from completing our daily anniversary event, for a limited time, Time and Tide will be available to all players level 10 and up. Romulan players must have selected a faction. After this, it will be in our normal mission journal progression. As the first map is in the Delta Quadrant, players less than level 50 can access the mission from the Dyson Sphere Gateway near the Jurette system. We are proud to present this new featured episode to celebrate our 6th anniversary. And this is the one that's probably going to get you like 400 cumin, not cumindations, but like vouchers or whatever toward the, um, toward your ship. And then you have to grind the rest. Uh, but we'll find out tomorrow when this thing is out. Um, I'm looking forward to playing this. Uh, this should be quite fun. Time travel indeed. Uh, so if anybody doubted that season 11 New Dawn wasn't about time travel, um, yeah, you are, you have been corrected. Uh, season 11 is all about time travel. Season 11, I mean, it's, it's, the nail is in the wood. The hammer has hit the nail. Uh, season 11 is all about the temporal cold war from Enterprise. It is all about time travel. It is all about the 28th and 29th century, and maybe even the 31st century with Daniels. Um, it all comes together in this series, so that is what they're exploring, and that's what we're exploring. So if you had any doubts, that doubt should be washed away. Uh, the New Dawn is time travel. The New Dawn is Starfleet taking its first steps into time travel. That is literally what it is and what it means. So that's what we're going to be doing. Now, I do have some things to say about this, given the fact that there is time travel involved. We're already getting, and we've already had in the past, ships from the future show up in Star Trek. In fact, ships we get to play, like the Wells and the Mobius, and now this Dreadnought. Excuse me. And my problem with that is the fact that if they were truly from the future, 
they would overpower anything we have today. So they have to come up with a way or an explanation to depower the ships so that we can fly them and not be the best thing in the universe. That saddens me. It also makes it completely not logical because that's not how it would really be. Um, so, you know, I, I know what they want to do is they want to give us these ships, future ships that we enjoy flying, but they do have to depower them. And that just, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I have a real problem with providing future ships so much like they've been doing and continue to do because they're just not as powerful as they should be. And uh, I, I understand the reason, the end game story or reason for why, uh, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense because even if the Tholians would have stripped out most of the technology in the ships, something like the hull, you can't change, you can't change the strength of the hull by stripping out, you know, consoles and stuff in the ship. The hull strength would still be whatever 29th century hull material is made out of. That you that you can't change the nature of the ship. You know, the hull would be made made out of 29th century metals that are probably way beyond what we have today in the 25th century and it by themselves would probably be comparable in game to like a hundred thousand hull strength or something you know or more so <laughs> that part just don't make sense to me at the least these ships should have like a hundred thousand hull strength or more but obviously that would be ridiculous and our ship would be the best thing in the game everyone would want that ship and then there would be no other ships people would go after so obviously they can't do that, but it is ridiculous because of that fact. That's why I, I just think they should have never have done it in the first place and introduced that problem. But they have, and I got to say, I enjoy flying the future ships, but um, it is a little ridiculous because we are talking about ships from the 28th, 29th, 31st century that should just totally obliterate everything in the 25th century. So yeah, a little ridiculous. We, I guess we just, it's just one of those things you just have to um, bend reality thinking about and just think, well, it's just not an issue, I guess. Uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to this episode. I'm looking forward to this anniversary. I'm looking forward to getting the Crinum ship. I'm looking forward to getting the Dreadnought. I'm looking forward to all of it. I want all of it. I will do videos on it. We'll do uh, many videos on it. Go through what you can do in the anniversary. Uh, go through playing this mission, obviously. Um, and um, when I get all the ships... I will do reviews on them. That is coming too. Um, I still have other ships lined up to do reviews on. I've got the Resvreth, the Breen Resvreth. It's next. I also have a Krenum warship. It's in there. It's in the pipeline. Um, I've also got, uh, this is going way back even, I have um, a uh, an Iconian ship to do. Yep, I got an Iconian ship. So that is something that I will do, but that'll have to come later because right now I want to get these other ships I have going and then I want to get this Crinum time ship and this Dreadnought. I want to get it, get those going. Um, so it's all planned. I, I plan to do all of it. It'll just take me some time, so bear with me. Anyway, everybody, anniversary probably will be online when this video is online, but now you know what to expect and do in the anniversary and that is knowledge worth knowing. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening to this wonderful video, and I hope you all enjoy the anniversary, the sixth anniversary. Uh, Time and Tide, please don't spoil it for me. Um, I will probably not be able to play it until later on tonight or whatever when, uh, when, uh, when it comes out, but when it does, I will, and I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. Okay, everybody. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.